السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ الحمد للہ الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاة والسلام علی سید الانبیاء والمرسلین اما بعد فاعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین صدق اللہ العظیم و صدق رسوله النبی الحمید الكریم Respected audience, may we all sincerely from our hearts recite Dudu Sharif. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina wa Nabiyyina wa Mawlana Muhammadin Ma'adin al-Judi wa al-Karam wa man bailimmi wa al-Hilmi wa al-Hikam wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallam. Sayyidina Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa sallam himself mentioned in a hadith. He said that once Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to me, لَوْ لَاكَ مَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسِ لَوْ لَاكَ مَا خَلَقْتُ الْأَرْضِينَ مَا خَلَقْتُ الْأَفْلَاكَ وَالْأَرْضِينَ That, O my beloved Prophet, if it was not for you, then I would not have created mankind, nor would I created the jinn. And if it wasn't for you, then I would not have created the aflaq, the heavens, and I would have not created the earth or any planets in this world. So, from this we understand that everything that has been created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was all for the sake of the milad of Sayyiduna Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It was all in preparation for the coming of Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. And yesterday I mentioned that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam already knew that he was a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is logically understandable because it is mentioned by the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created he created all the souls of all the humans that, that were to exist until the Day of Judgment. And from amongst them souls, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose the most beautiful and the most perfect and the purest souls. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose them for His prophethood and for His messengership. So these were already fixed. They were already fixed before they came into this world for a mission as messengers of Allah and prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the same manner, after choosing the prophets and the messengers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose the best of all souls for the companions of Sayyiduna Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. And they became the Ashab, the Sahaba kiram So from this we understand that the Anbiya kiram and the Rusul Izam were already chosen. And from this, one of the agreed upon beliefs amongst the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah is that none can become a prophet or messenger of Allah by his own striving and struggling and worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It cannot happen, it is impossible. A prophet and messenger of Allah is always fixed by Allah, he is created for that purpose, and then he is sent into this world for that purpose. We also heard yesterday that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was first created as a light, nur. And that nur was passed amongst his forefathers and his ancestors. And every ancestor in whose loins he carried the nur of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, like we are born today, we were once in the loins of our father. And in the same way, in the loins of his father and in the loins of our ancestors, that generation continues and that's when we come into this world. But the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed through the most purest and the most honorable and accepted humans in the court of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala through the generations from Sayyiduna Adam Alayhi Salaam all the way through to Sayyiduna Ibrahim Alayhi Salaam and then to Sayyiduna Abdul Muttalib 
through Sayyiduna Abdul Muttalib to Sayyiduna Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in and then into Sayyiduna Amina radiallahu ta'ala anha's womb. Now these ancestors of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that carried the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in their loins, there are many incidents in regards to each individual in that chain of ancestors of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that when they carried this nur before that nur was passed into their wives through which the next child was born the next person in that chain was born until then their faces and their foreheads used to shine and that shining bright light used to make them look extremely beautiful in the same manner Sayyidina Abdul Muttalib was also beautiful and that used to shine on his blessed forehead but when his wife became pregnant with Sayyidina Abdullah that light from Sayyidina Abdul Muttalib vanished and then when Sayyidina Abdullah was born his blessed forehead was shining bright with that nur of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and I'll mention one incident because I don't have much time and I'm, I'm trying to keep everything brief one incident is that Sayyidina Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala used to look so beautiful that this bright light, the nur of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to shine from his forehead. His bright face and his beauty was famous throughout the Arab world. One of the kings of Persia, he had a daughter who was also known to be beautiful. She heard of Sayyidina Abdullah in Mecca. So she left Persia and traveled to Mecca Mukarramah just to see Sayyiduna Abdullah radiallahu anhu. And she once sees Sayyiduna Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala and she becomes completely devoted. And she just wants to get married to Sayyiduna Abdullah. And Sayyiduna Abdullah was already married to Sayyida Amina radiallahu ta'ala anha. Now this, this woman from Persia, this princess, her name was Fatima. She, and this is mentioned in Shawahid al by Imam Jami radiallahu ta'ala. He says that when she became devoted, she looked for opportunities to try and approach him. And once Sayyidina Abdullah went hunting for animal, for an animal. And whilst he was hunting, she came before him. And then she proposed that I wish to marry you. I am such and such from Persia. Sayyiduna Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala's blessed forehead was shining bright with this light. He said that I first must ask my father. I will ask my father and I will see what he has to say. So then he returns to Sayyiduna Abdul Muttalib and asks Sayyiduna Abdul Muttalib. He agrees. He says, I agree, you may get married to her. So now Sayyidina Abdullah comes home and that night he slept with his wife Sayyida Amina radiallahu anha. And that was the moment when Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's nur was passed through Sayyiduna Abdullah into the blessed womb of Sayyida Amina radiallahu anha. The next day when Sayyidina Abdullah met with this Fatima from Persia to inform her that I agree to your proposal, she saw that that nur was no longer in the blessed forehead of Sayyidina Abdullah and therefore then she refused the marriage and she returned back to Persia. From this, I just want to show that that nur of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was so bright that it would shine through his blessed ancestors. Then yesterday I mentioned that when Sayyida Amina radiallahu anha gave birth, she says herself that I gave birth to a light. It was so bright that I could see the Mashariq and the Maghrib. I could see the palaces of Syria. That is how bright this light was when she gave birth to Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she was given an order from the unseen that you must name him Muhammad and Ahmed. And therefore she named him Muhammad and Ahmed. Sayyiduna Uthman ibn Abil As radiallahu ta'ala he says that my mother was present in that room when Sayyida Amina radiallahu anha gave birth. She said, Sayyiduna Uthman says that my mother, Sayyiduna Uthman ibn Abil As, he says that my mother said that when she was giving birth and the delivery began, when I looked in the skies, it seemed as all the stars had gathered above the house of Sayyida Amina radiallahu anha. And that I also mentioned briefly yesterday. Sayyida Safiya, 
Sayyida Safiya binte Abdul Muttalib. She was also present at that time. And she says that when the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was born, I also witnessed that beautiful shining bright light. And I saw that the candles that were lighting in the room were overwhelmed by the light that was born from Sayyida Amina radiallahu anha. And it was really strange, but we did not know what to make of it. And she says when Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was born, he was he immediately went into prostration, into sijda. And he said, La ilaha illallah, inni Rasulullah. There is no God, there is none worthy of worship but Allah, and I am the messenger of Allah. This shows to us that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was given the power of miracles before he announced his prophethood. And yesterday I mentioned that there are two types of miracles. And you should all learn this, that there are two types of miracles that are performed by the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of them is known as a mu'jiza. We've all heard of that. Mu'jiza is that miracle which occurs from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after his announcement of prophethood. That which happens before he announces his prophethood is known as irhas. Is known as irhas. So there are irhas and there are mu'jiza. The irhasat of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the mu'jizat of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The occurrings, the strange and miracle occurrings in the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam before he announced his prophethood, before the age of 40, are known as the irhasat of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And from amongst them irhasat is the way he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came into this world as a bright light and then he went into prostration and the beautiful bright light through which Sayyida Amina radiallahu anha saw the mashariq and the magharib of the world, the, the east and the west of the world and she also saw the, the palaces in Syria and then for him to speak, for him to speak when he is born is also from amongst the irhasat of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam now Sayyiduna Abdul Muttalib at the time of the birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was doing tawaf of the Kaaba, according to one narration. His father, the father of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away four months, about four months before he was born. Now Sayyidina Abdul Muttalib, he was doing tawaf and a person came to him and announced that congratulations, may you be blessed for a boy has been born in your home. So then he himself says that I rushed to the home of Sayyida Amina. And when I saw this blessed beautiful child of mine, I was amazed at his beauty and his bright light that was shining from him. I wrapped him in a clean cloth and I took him towards the Kaaba in order to bless Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now he himself says, and there are several narrations for this, although they are weak narrations, but there are several which strengthens the narration. He himself says that as I was going towards the Kaaba with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in order to bless Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it seemed as though the Kaaba was coming to me. And instead of me taking Muhammad to be blessed by the Kaaba, it seemed as though the Kaaba was seeking blessings from this child. And then there are narrations of people who are watching Sayyiduna Abdul Muttalib taking Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the Kaaba. They who were watching said that we could see that either Abdul Muttalib was going towards the Kaaba or the Kaaba was going towards Abdul Muttalib. We could not decide which one was correct. This shows that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not blessed by the Kaaba because remember the Kaaba is a house, it's made of brick. It is a creation of Allah. And without doubt, as a Muslim, it is necessary for you to believe that Sayyiduna Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the most superior creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore, without doubt, he is superior than the Kaaba. And that is why Allah Hazrat Imam Ahmad Raza radiallahu ta'ala says, Haji Kaaba to dekh chuke 
کعبے کا کعبہ دیکھو یعنی سیدنا محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم is the کعبہ of the کعبہ he is the قبلہ for the کعبہ even the کعبہ bows towards سیدنا محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم after this the first woman to feed the messenger of Allah صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم milk was سیدہ ام ایمن her name was Baraka she was gifted to Sayyidullah Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam through the inheritance of his father, Sayyidullah Abdullah. When he passed away, she became a khadima, a servant of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after he was born. So she was the first one who fed Sayyidullah Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam her milk. So she became the foster mother of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Many strange happenings occurred. One of them is many of the Yahud, the Jews, who had already known that a, a final prophet is yet to be born. And these are the signs. These signs were mentioned in the Tawrat, in their book, the Old Testament. And these signs were also mentioned in the New Testament, the Bible, the Injil. So the Christians already knew and the Jews already knew. The only thing that the Jews weren't sure of is whether this last prophet would be from amongst the Bani Israel or from amongst the children of Sayyidina Ismail salam. They weren't sure of that. But once the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was born, many of the Jews, the Yahud, had seen the signs that this was the time when the final prophet was to be born. From amongst one of the Jews, from amongst the Jews, there was one who used to live in, in, in Makkah Mukarrama. He, according to the signs that he had in his knowledge, he decided to come to a few men from amongst the Quraysh and he asked them, has there been a, a, a child born amongst the Quraysh? A male child, a son born amongst the Quraysh? And the Quraysh said, we're, we're not sure. Why are you asking? So he said, there's been many strange occurrences. The falling of all the idols, the earthquake that happened in Iran, four, four minarets, Four palaces of Kisra in Iran were shattered and, and they came down on the earth because an earthquake occurred there. There was water, specific water that people used to worship. It completely dried up. There was a fire which was burning, which I mentioned yesterday in Persia, that had burned for over a thousand years. And they believed that this fire was the creator of everything else and this fire could never be put off. But as soon as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was born, that fire extinguished and vanished. All these signs had occurred. So after the birth of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa after a certain period of time had passed, this Jew who lived in Mecca asked the Quraysh and the Quraysh had been not sure. They went and asked around and they found out that yes, a child has been born in the home of Sayyidun Abdul Muttalib. So then they told this Jew that a child has been born, the grandson of Sayyidina Abdul Muttalib. So then this Jew comes to the home of Sayyidina Abdullah radiallahu and to the house of Sayyidina Amina. And he seeks permission to come inside. He comes inside and seeks permission to see Sayyidina Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Sayyidina Amina radiallahu anha used to keep the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hidden from the eyes of people because he was so beautiful, because he had such a bright light illuminating from him. She didn't want people to see this and start assuming different things. And because of the strange hearings that she heard from the unseen, and because of the words she had heard from the mouth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a child, she wanted to keep Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam protected. So what happens is he seeks permission and she allows him to come in. When he sees this beautiful bright face of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is astonished and he asks, what name have you given him? As soon as she says that I have given him the name Muhammad and Ahmed, this Jew completely fainted and fell on the ground. Later when he awoke, when he woke up, he said that are you certain that his name is Muhammad and Ahmed? And she says yes. Why did you name him Muhammad and Ahmed? She says that because I heard a voice from the unseen that said that I must name him Muhammad and Ahmed. Then the Jew says, can I see his back? So Sayyidah Amina radiallahu anha removes the covering on the back of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And there she, there he sees a stump, the mahar of Nabuwa. 
And this mahar of Nabuwa, this stamp, Sayyidah Amina radiallahu anha herself says that when the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa was born, I heard the, uh, I heard the voice of uh, horses. I heard the ho voice of the hooves of horses. So it was as though horses were coming to me and this cloud appeared and from them I heard the voices of humans speaking. But they were malaika, they were angels. When they came, they had a ring. They had this beautiful ring with which they stamped the back of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And on the back on this mahar of Nubuwa, it said Muhammad Rasulullah, Muhammad the Messenger of Allah. And this was the stamp of Nubuwa, which was mentioned in all the previous books. So when this Jew saw this, he completely fainted again. And later when he awoke, he said to Sayyidah Amina radiallahu anha that you must protect this child. You must protect this child from the Jews. Even I have the intention to kill this child, but I am abstaining from this. I am refraining myself from this. You must protect him from the Jews because I swear by Allah, Allah has taken prophethood from the Bani Israel and Allah has given prophethood to the Quraysh. The final prophet was to come from the Bani Israel, but Allah has taken that away from the Bani Israel and now Allah has given it to the Quraysh. Now Sayyida Amina radiallahu anha is really worried about the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But she herself says, every time I look at the Messenger of Allah, I feel at peace. I feel tranquility. And then four months pass. After four months have passed, a group of women and men with their husbands and their family members come from a place uh, in the villages. And amongst them, from the Bani Saad, from the tribe of Bani Saad, is a woman, the daughter of Dhuayb, known as Sayyida Halima. She comes, and these women from the villages used to come to Mecca, and they used to take the newborn children from Mecca and take them to the villages. The reason why they used to do this is because it was regarded, uh, the people of, the, of that time regarded the air and the atmosphere of the villages clean and pure. Whereas the air and atmosphere in the cities used to be polluted because of the many animals that used to come and go for merchandise, for business purposes. So therefore, the children were taken to the villages to grow up and nurture in a, in a purer air. So this group of women have now come into Mecca to take a child and take that child home so that they could earn money. Because in exchange for that nurturing of that child, they used to, be, they used to get paid from the people of Mecca, from the rich people of Mecca. So Sayyida Halima radiallahu anha, she herself says that when that time, or in that time, she says that me and my husband, her husband's name was Harith, al Harith, and he was also known as Abu Dhuayb. Abu Dhuayb al Harith and me were living in a time of poverty. We had nothing left. We were on the verge of becoming completely bankrupt. We had nothing left. We had no food in our home. My breast had no milk left. I had one child who was breastfeeding. His name was Hamza. And this Hamza, Sayyidina Hamza, becomes the fostering brother of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa later. She says, I had nothing. And all I had was a donkey, and I had a few goats and a few animals, but none of them had any milk in them. They were all thin because there was no food and water to give to them. She says, I took with me one of the she camels I had, and I took with me a donkey that I had. It was, it was a slightly larger than a normal donkey. She says, I took them both with me to Mecca with this group of people in order to get a child, bring a child to my home so that I could gain some money, some wealth, so that I could buy food and things. So she says, when I went, my animal that I was riding on the donkey was really slow and I'd always get left behind from the rest of the women. And they'd always start saying things to me and saying negative things to me that because of you, we're all being left behind. We need to rush, hurry up, hurry up. So she says, finally, we reached Makkah Mukarrama. When we reached Makkah Mukarrama, because I was late in entering Makkah, all the children, the newborn children were already taken. <coughs> they were already taken. <coughs> the only child that was left was at the house of Sayyida Amina radiallahu anha. And his name was Muhammad. The reason why he was left is because no woman wanted to take a child who had no father. 
Because they thought and they assumed that because this child doesn't have a father, how much will they pay us? They won't be able to pay us and reward us enough. Therefore, they all refused to take Sayyidina Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But Sayyida Amina radiallahu anha did not show the Messenger of Allah to any one of them. Because if they would have seen the blessed beauty of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then surely they would have took him. But because they hadn't seen the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and because he was an orphan, they didn't want to take Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sayyida Halima radiallahu anha came to the doorstep of Sayyida Amina radiallahu anha. And she has no choice because there's no other child left. She says, okay, I'll take him. But as soon as she sees the, pre the, the blessed beauty and the blessed light shining from the blessed face of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she immediately falls in love with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she starts kissing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is when the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is at the age of four months, not even half a year yet. She starts kissing him and then she decides to give the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam some milk. But she gives the left breast to feed the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam does not drink from the milk of Sayyida Halima Radiallahu Anha. Then she decides to give the right breast. And at that point Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam drinks the milk from the breast of Sayyida Halima radiallahu anha. Yani, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was already taught by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you must always begin from the right. And therefore he drank from the right. And this is why the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to be known as Ummi. His name and his title was Ummi. And the word Ummi means he who has never been taught. He who has never been taught by any school or any madrasa, he who has never been taught by any teacher, he who has been not been taught by anyone at all. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was known as Ummi because he had not been taught by anyone from amongst the people that existed at that time. It rather, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was taught directly by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why on earth would he need a teacher? Why on earth would he need to go to a school or a madrasa when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was his teacher? And from amongst the wisdoms in that is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was to reveal the Quran on Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if the people had seen that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was well educated by man and he had teachers, then they would have assumed that maybe he made the Quran of himself. But because they did not see that he had a teacher or he had been taught poetry or anything like that, they couldn't say that he made it himself. They couldn't say that because he had not been taught by any poet or any expert in language of that time. So that is one of the wisdoms why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam an ummi in the eyes of the people. In the same way, one of the wisdoms is that if Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was taught by a man and he had a teacher or he went to a school, then it would have become necessary upon him to respect and honor his teacher. But Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was created by Allah for people to respect and honor him, not for him to honor and respect other people. He became the center of respect and honor. And therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected him from any teacher from amongst the man and from amongst the jinn and from amongst the malaika. So he had no teacher. Sayyida Halima radiallahu anha then says that after he drank the milk from my right breast, I then gave him my left breast because the milk had finished from my right breast. But the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam refused to drink from my left breast. It was as though he was already taught insaf and fairness because it was as though he knew that I had Hamza who was also breastfeeding from me. So he left one share for, my, for his foster brother Hamza and only used one for himself. So the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sayyida Halima radiallahu anha says that even at that age of four months was teaching me how to be fair amongst the people. 
This was the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She then says that then I took the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And she says for a few days she stayed in Makkah Mukarramah. They used to have tents. They used to build tents in the outskirts of Makkah. And that's where these women used to live. When they used to come to Makkah to take their children. Then she says that I returned to the tent and I started staying there. She says that I saw that... But many people started to come and see and started to stare at the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at this beautiful child and they would just stare and look at how beautiful and how bright he was and Sayyida Amina radiallahu anha would meet up with her during these days when she was she was uh, residing in the outskirts of Mecca when she came once to Sayyida Amina before she left to return back to her village, she asked Sayyida Amina radiallahu anha that how is it that he is so bright and beautiful? How is it that in the daytime, whenever I am walking with him, there is a cloud that walks with me and gives me shade from the sun, from the shining bright and hot sun? Why is all this happening? Why is it that when I walk past a cactus plant, it seems as though the cactus plant is bowing towards me? Why is it that when I'm walking past stones, and the mountains, I can hear voices like Assalamu alaikum ya Rasulullah. Why are all these things happening? And Sayyidina Amina radiallahu anha told her that I don't know how to explain this, but I have had some Jews come to me and they said to me that this man is to be the final prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Jews will try to kill him and therefore you must make sure that you protect him. And Sayyidina Amina radiallahu anha also told her that when he was born, it was as though a light came out of me and it became completely bright. And then she tells Sayyida Halima about all the occurrences of when the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born. Now Sayyida Halima radiallahu anha, she now sits on the donkey to return back to her villages, to the Qabila of Bani Sa'd. Now when she sits on the donkey with the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, suddenly the donkey becomes really fast and becomes really healthy and the she camel that she had with with her now the she camels is filled with milk and there's plenty of milk in the she camel and she is completely astonished at how this animal has transformed from this really weak animal to this really strong and healthy and fast animal even the other women that were with Sayyida Halima they started saying to Sayyida Halima that you need to slow down and you need to tell us that have you exchanged have you changed your animal in Makkah? This is not possible. And Sayyida Halima radiallahu anha would say that I don't know, I have not changed my animal, but me and my husband Harith, we believe that this is all the blessings of this child that we are carrying with us, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that you all refused and Allah had destined him to be in my lap. And then she takes Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to her home in her village in the Qabila of Bani Sa'd. Now she herself says that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's growth was not like normal children. His growth was twice as fast as normal children. So when a child would be normally six months based on his body and his strength, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa would have the strength and the body of a one-year-old. And when, and when he was one, he would have the body, strength, intellect of a two-year-old. In that manner, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was given this superiority by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She says at five months, he would stand up and walk at five months. And at six months, Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would stand up and walk in speed and he would go wherever he wanted. She says at seven months he started leaving the home and going outside. At seven months he would start walking outside. Now, normally now this happens at the age of roughly about three or four. But the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he was seven months and eight months, he would walk freely and he would walk outside and come back himself. When he reached eight months, she says that he would start speaking in complete sentences. He would speak in full sentences. When he was nine months, he spoke better Arabic than myself. Sayyida Halima radiallahu anha said. She says, I don't know how he would learn or who would teach him, but I, I saw that he could speak fasih, yani eloquent Arabic language. And she says that sometimes when I would lie him down, he would be looking up in the sky and there was no roof. 
So he would see the moon, the moon would be there. And he would be moving his finger and he would be talking. And she says that when I saw him raising his finger in the skies, I saw that when he moved his finger towards the right, I saw that the moon would move to the right. When he moved his finger to the left, the moon moved to the left. And in the manner, in that manner, the moon moved everywhere in every direction that he would move his finger. It was as though the moon was his toy that he used to play with. Ala Hazrat Imam Ahmad Raza radiallahu ta'ala says, Ke chand juk jata, jidhar ungli uthate mahad mein. Mahad means whilst he was in the lap. Chand juk jata, jidhar ungli uthate mahad mein. Kya hi chalta tha khilona? Kya hi chalta tha isharo par khilona noor ka? Sayyiduna Abbas radiallahu ta'ala an, his son Sayyiduna Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala he narrates that even when the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in Makkah Mukarramah, my father Abbas radiallahu ta'ala, the uncle of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says that after Islam had now developed and people had accepted Iman and the announcement of Prophet had happened, Sayyiduna Abbas radiallahu ta'ala said to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that, do you know that I had already accepted Iman when you were a child in the lap of your mother and Halima, when I used to see you sit uh, lying on the ground with your finger pointed towards the sky and I used to see that the moon used to move in the direction of your finger. I already accepted Iman at that time. This is what he used to say. So this was the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam lived for two years with Sayyida Halima radiallahu anha. After two years, Sayyida Halima radiallahu anha had to take the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam back to Makkah Mukarramah because the time was up. Now within these two years, she and her husband became from amongst the richest women in their tribe. They used to be the poorest, now they became the richest. They used to have containers full of milk in their homes. The sheep that used to go and graze, their sheep used to become strong and healthy. And the tribe of Banu Saad used to come to their home and say, why is it that your animals are so healthy and strong? Why is it that they are giving so much milk? Why is it that you have so much health in your home? We sent our shepherds, our labors to take our animals to where your sheep graze and eat grass. So our animals have also been eating that same grass. But your animals are developing so well. Why are anim our animals not de developing in that manner? So Sayyida Halima radiallahu anha would say that this is all the barakah, this is all the blessing of this child we have in our home. Up to the extent that there are narrations, although they are weak, but accepted in seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the fazail of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that a time came when people who became ill and unwell and sick, they used to come to the house of Sayyida Halima radiallahu anha and Sayyida Halima would put, would place the blessed hand of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa when he was a child into the milk and she would give that milk to this ill and sick person and when they would drink it, they would become cured. Sayyida Halima radiallahu anha returns back to Makkah Mukarramah. What happens after that, inshallah, we will continue with tomorrow. Jazakumullah khaira. Assalamu alaikum.